probably the most important thing before or right after you've come to the conclusion of you know, the brilliant idea that you have for an event <laughs> is to check the J Connect calendar date. Check the calendar in J Connect for the date you would like to host your event. If there are no conflicts, enter your event in J Connect to secure your date and rooms. If there are conflicts, please contact Roxana to discuss and clear the conflicts before proceeding. Also, at this time, you can bypass the resource and support forms and complete them at a later date. I'll, I'll get to that latter part a little bit later. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about the calendar. Um, like I just did just now, I gave everyone information about events that are going to be happening uh, throughout the summer. So when you're looking at the calendar, you should also pay attention to what's going to be promoted. And if you have an event that you know is going to require promotion, you want to be strategic, right, and, and where you place your event. Uh, because the level of promotion for your event or the level of exposure of your event depends on which month, which time of the year, you know, you know what I'm saying? It, it, all that stuff depends. So you want to be a little strategic and, and wise when you're choosing, uh, choosing a date. Number three, when you receive approval for your room requests, complete the promotion request form. The promotion request form should be completed as soon as possible, ideally 12 weeks from your event date, especially if video promotion is needed. So I want to rest there a little bit before I get to the letters in red. Letters in red mean it's important, amen? So before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about 12 weeks. So 12 weeks sounds like a lot. It sounds like a long time, um, but it's really just three months. And ideally, if you really want a successful event, in, my, in our opinion, as, as uh, the marketing team, we feel like you should be projecting out that far um, for multiple reasons. There are so many things that you don't necessarily think about when you're putting together your event. A lot of times you just say, oh, I have a great event. Let's get it in the calendar. Hey, let's just, you know, we'll make it happen. Um, you know, I'll talk to that person later or I'll get it. I'll get them the information later. And there's so many things and you'll be amazed how fast 12 weeks will, will go by. So we encourage you, please, look at the calendar, map out 12 weeks before your event, if possible. Um, of course, we know that that's not always possible, you know, so we, we understand that. But in theory, you want to look at it that way as pushing your event out because there's steps that you want to take care of along the way of the 12 weeks. When your promotion request is received by me and Sarah and Andrea, your promotion request will be added to the master promotion schedule timeline. So although a lot of you don't know what that is, so as a marketing team, we have our own promotion timeline calendar that we work off of. Um, and that's what that's talking about. We, we will add it at that point in time. Um, another important message, Marcoms and media work off a master promotion schedule timeline. Therefore, if you do not complete the promotion request form in JConnect, your event may not receive promotion. Print collateral, IMAGs, newsletter mentions, graphic design, web presence, or video support. So that tells you how important that promotion request form is. Sometimes I know... Um, it's easy to run through JConnect and not detailedly fill out the promotion request form. But the promotion request form is probably the most important form uh, after um, you secure your date. Uh, you, if you know your event is going to require promotion or if you think your event is going to require promotion, fill it out. Get that in as soon as possible. It notifies uh, the marketing team that you are requesting promo. And it gives us a head start on uh, what we need to do to get prepared for your event. So that's very crucial for people like Kathy and people like um, Andrea and uh, Matt. It really helps them when they can, and John, when they can see weeks in advance, months in advance of an, of an event that you want to do. They can get working on it. They can get creative, more creative, opposed to 
trying to put together an iMac for you in two days. I mean, it's, you know, let's face it, if it had a little more time, then they could even get more creative in your presentation for your event. So just think about that. Step four, you will be contacted by Andrea within three business days of submitting your promotion request. Andrea will schedule a meeting for you to meet with the Marcom's team, which is me, Sarah, sometimes Teresa, uh, and Andrea, uh, depending on Teresa's schedule, sometimes she's busy with Pastor Dick's things, uh, but definitely with me, Sarah, and Andrea, and we will discuss all the particulars of your promotion needs and, and timelines. Um, I'm going to put a little someone on the spot, and I hope she don't mind, Eileen. So Eileen is very, very, very good at this. <laughs> she, she always, after she gets her calendar thing, after she um, makes all of her, not that anyone else is not good at it. I'm just picking on Eileen right now. And she makes sure she meets with us way ahead of time to let us know what she's doing, what she's planning, uh, what all it details, get, get our feedback, get our marketing feedback, which I think is very important. I mean, you know, you, sometimes you have an idea, but when you talk to some people who that's their job to do marketing, you get better information to even help your event even more. Um, and I know sometimes this is something that when we first created the event process that we really uh, stuck to. Um, but for whatever reason, we haven't done this step as often as we would like to. So um, what I'm asking is you guys to force this on us. You know, make us meet with you. Call that meeting so that we can sit down with you and discuss through your event and truly fine tooth comb it as best we can. Uh, so please do that. And then, uh, of course, it's dependent on availability. But I just really encourage you, once you have put your event into the calendar, once you've did your promotion request, send us an email and request a meeting so that we can discuss your event thoroughly. OK, number five, after your initial meeting with the Marcom's team, you will receive regular updates and communication regarding your promotion requests, i.e pre-approval graphics, video promotions, print design, et cetera. For any changes to your event's promotion after the initial meeting, contact the following persons. So what this is saying is after we have met with you, after you've done the calendar request, after you've done the promotion request, and after we've scheduled our meeting and we've talked your event through and we got a plan, um, if there's changes that need to be made, then obviously you go directly to these folks um, for support. Um, email Kath, Catherine directly and just copy Sarah, uh, me, and Andrea on that email if you have any changes. And then all other, all other changes, you can email uh, me and Sarah directly and copy Andrea. So basically what this is saying is if there's changes you want to make, just be, you know, over communicative. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, let, every, let us know. You know, don't hold it in or don't be confused of what to do. If you got any type of question or change or something you want to change in your event or something's not going right, just send us an email and we'll try to discuss that with you to get it back on track. Okay. Um, within four to eight weeks of your event date, be sure to have completed all of your resources and support forms, types of form requests, registration or payment forms as soon as possible from the time you receive your project code. Project codes are received when you email DD to request a project code. Audio support requests at least four weeks from the event date. Um, this just helps people like Jonathan tremendously when he knows ahead of time, at least a month in advance, of when, if your event is going to need audio. Um, I mean, you, you, if you want it recorded, if you need him there, it gives him time to even plan his schedule, or if he needs to input, implement other people to be there on your behalf. It gets really hard when you get to that two-week range or that one-week range to try to say that you need audio support. Uh, video support requests. This is not for promotions. This is if your event needs to be recorded, DVD sales, or obtaining B-roll footage for later promotions or website material four weeks in advance. Same thing. Uh, except for on Matt's side, it helps him. Some people want 
you know, if you do an event, you want some B-roll, so you're going to need someone there extra to record. You know, you're going to need that extra support. So they are requesting at least four weeks. Well, we are requesting at least four weeks in advance for that. And I, I know a lot of this seems like it's way in advance. It's not normally how Jubilee, you know, sometimes we do things in, you know, the same week. But we want to encourage you guys to think ahead. Think way ahead. Because all of these things equal a successful event. Child care requests as soon as possible from, t from the time you receive your project code. That's when you want to also take care of the child care if you, if you need it. Equipment, table, chairs, at least six weeks from the event date. Um, those got, they, need that, they need that time. Hospitality, I believe this, this is, has to do with Jose and Leslie and uh, all of our hospitality folks and our maintenance and uh, Pastor Judy. This, is, this would be great if they could get that. Hospitality, six weeks from the event date, and security team, Pastor Randy, at least six weeks in, adva in advance, um, they would like that. Okay, number seven, changing a reoccurring event already in JConnect. If you have a reoccurring event in JConnect that you want to change or add promotion, update an existing iMac, graphic, web banner, create a new video, promo, simply edit the event in JConnect by making any necessary changes to the promotion request form. Marketing will be notified of your request and you will be contacted to review the request changes. Okay, non-event related print material. In order to maintain Jubilee's branding standards, if you would like something designed or printed for your ministry department that is not necessarily event specific, i.e. design a ministry brochure, have a t-shirt made, uh, coffee mugs, bookmarks, banners, or any other marketing or promotional collateral. Even if you are using an outside vendor, please email your request with details and deadlines directly to me, Sarah, and Andrea. We'll help you coordinate your request to ensure your deadline is met in addition to following our standard five-point branding check, which I'll explain in a minute. So just to summarize this, um, I know sometimes uh, we plan events, and sometimes there, there, there's been times where there hasn't been enough time to maybe talk to our own graphics design, or you have someone who you want to do your own type of thing, uh, design something on your own. Uh, we're not saying no. What we're saying is notify us. Let us see it. Let us see if it matches the look and feel of Jubilee, of what we normally present to our folks. We don't want to put something up on the screen or show something that just doesn't have the Jubilee feel to it. And you'll be, then you, you look out of place. And here's our check. Um, not very complicated. Is there a Jubilee logo on it, on the design? You'd be surprised at how many designs we see or how many iMags we see or how many things we see that doesn't even have the Jubilee logo on it. It doesn't even say Jubilee on it. It just talks about the event. So when Sarah and I and Andrea, when, we, when we, we're looking for this here, this is what we're looking for. We're looking to see if it has a Jubilee logo on it, our web address, our phone number. Is there an event date, time, location? Is there a cost of the event? Is the ministry or contact information for the event presented properly? Contact review, spelling, grammar, design, layout, and is the request in line with Jubilee's vision mission, and values. And number five are the social media streams presented, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and hashtags presented properly. So I, I would suggest that everyone, you, I think we gave all you guys out this form. Keep these forms and um, utilize it. So you know when you're talking with or when you get your design back from Kathy or whoever um, has made it for you, check, check it yourself to see if all of these things are, are there. Most of them are needed. Um, so just check them yourself and you can see. But these are all the things that we require um, on material, print material, iMags, vid not videos, but mostly print material that we're going to be showing to our congregation. And then everyone has this. This is a quick cheat sheet that we provided for everyone. Um, I think Andrea passed it out, something that you can keep. It's just some tools, some basic tools that you can utilize when you're planning out your, your event.
Hi, I'm Cody, and I'll be your guide as we look at creating forms. Forms are a great way to gather information for events, retreats, mission trips, and even simple surveys. You can also accept payments through forms. Let's take a look. Click the More link on the left to access the Forms area. You'll need to have the Form Admin privilege or be the Master Administrator in order to create a new form. However, a Form Manager can access and work with existing forms they manage. Once in the Forms area, click the Build a New Form button on the right. You are presented with the Form Designer screen. The middle of the screen will show you how the form will look and the list of items on the right are used to create the form. Let's start by clicking the Form Settings tab. Enter a title and a description for the form to be viewed by the person filling out the form. Notice that you have extra formatting options by clicking the Rich Text On link. The Show on the List of Forms checkbox determines whether or not the form will be listed and visible to basic users. If it is unchecked, the only way to fill out the form is by sending someone the URL link. The Require Login to Fill Out form will take a person to the Church Community Builder login screen before being able to fill out the form. While this is not ideal in most situations, it can be helpful if you need only users of your system to fill out a form. The start date and end date should be filled out. These are the dates that will show on the list of forms. If no end date is entered, the form will be valid indefinitely. The confirmation page allows you to give the user a message after they have filled out the form. The confirmation number is great to use for payments or registration for an event. You can attach files for the registrant to download, such as a parental consent form. The payment and discount section allows the form to accept payments. Even if you do not have a merchant processor, you can still use this section and have the person pay later. The discount codes allow discounts in the price. Notice that you are asked to give a COA that the discount is applied to. Realize that this discount is only for registration items using that COA. Admin notifications allow you to enter the name of one or more people who will get an email anytime someone submits the form. Automation allows you to automate tasks when someone fills out the form. So, for example, you can add people who sign up into a process queue or a group or register them for an event. Please note, in order for this automation to trigger, the person must be matched in the system. See our video on managing your forms for more information on matching. The Add a Field tab allows you to add questions onto the form. The Contact Information section is unique in that all you need to do is check the box. If you leave it unchecked, it is an anonymous survey. Once checked, you can decide which profile fields the person must fill out. Make sure to choose between which to display and which are required. Each of the questions listed can be dragged and dropped into the form to create your registration. Each of the questions allows you to enter the title of the question and an explanation. You can then decide between required or if not required, you can mark a question as admin only and the person filling out the form will not see it. Some questions allow the user to choose an answer. You can delete a choice or change the sort order of the questions as needed. Notice that some of the questions allow automation. This is a unique feature that allows you to perform a task based on the answer to a question. For example, if you are filling out a registration for fall small groups and a person selects a small group, you can use an automation to then add it to that group. Another specific type of question is the product ticket question. It is here that you can accept payments for the event. Notice that you can add multiple payment items and each item can be linked to a different COA if necessary. Remember, if you are using a discount code, that the code will only discount the items with the same COA. Continue adding all the questions needed for the form. 
the layout elements help you break up the form into more readable components. So, if you are going to have a lot of questions, consider using either the section break or page break to allow the form to be more readable. You can edit any of the questions on the form by clicking on the question and making the changes. Click the I'm finished button when you are done. Notice the blue bar. All forms are initially unpublished to allow you time to make sure that it is ready to go. You can publish a form by either clicking the publish button or it will auto publish on the start date you entered. There you have it, forms. They have the flexibility to gather information from a simple survey to a complex mission trip application. For more information on forms, see our other videos and help articles. I know you guys probably have some questions. Uh, and well, first, I just want to thank everyone for, for, for being here and showing up. Um, it shows that you care about this part, this part of um, doing Lord's business. And um, shoot, I was getting a little, the lights was off. I started getting a little tired. <laughs> but it, it was just great information, though. I learned a lot. Uh, I hope that you guys did, too. There was one part that I wanted to mention that Sarah just had reminded me of. Um, in, the, in the part on the event request form, there's an area that says um, description or uh, uh, describe your event. So sometimes we, we look at that and it says something like, hey, come out. <laughs> it's it's going to be fun. <laughs> so in, in that area, it would be really, really beneficial for, for the entire marketing and promotions and, and everything that has to do with your event is if you would really take time in that area and really detail out and describe what it is you want the folks coming to your event to get out of it. Um, and what's it for? Who's it for? Um, you know, as, as, as much information as you can give us because we'll take that information and that'll be the basis of what we utilize for the web, for the newsletter, for your video, if there's a video, um, the entire promotion. Um, because it gets really difficult for us as a marketing team to try to figure out what you're trying to promote or what you want people to get out of it. You know, we, we're working with five, six events at a time. So it's, it's, uh, it's really kind of on you to, to really describe your event. Okay, two questions. First, when we're filling out that form, it populates the URL for us. We don't have to do anything. And that's what we uh, copy to send to people if they want to click onto the registration. Or is that something different? Or did I get it's confused? So you know where you have the URL where you said you can copy and paste? It's called the, the, the uh, promotion request form. Right. Is that your um, specific URL? Okay, so I was confused on that one. Okay. So if you need to share your form or you want to email somebody your registration, uh, yeah, if you want to email them directly, um, you, there is a share, a share tab on your form that you can copy and paste and, and send out. Um, it's also the same link that's used for our web page, um, and you, there's an option to do it for email. Um, the URL that I showed you was to take you directly to the event promotion request form. My second question is to you, when you're talking about the description, is that the um, information that you would use or John would use for the website? Yes. So that's why we would have to be very uh, specific of what we want, because that's what you're going to copy and paste on the website, give and take editing. Yes. Is, if, if it's all on the forms, then it eliminates you from having to send us an email. Or, you know, if everything is on the form, then, you know, these guys are sharp. They'll go right in there, they'll look at the form, and then, bam, they'll just input the information directly on there, and there'll be a quick process. Because, as you, as you know, um, what we end up having to do kind of now is you will fill out the form, and then you'll, comprom you'll, uh, you'll compile an email with all these details that you need, and then you have to send an email, and it becomes a lot of work, right? 
if, if, if we're able to put it all on the form, then it's just one process. Description just kind of describes what the event is, right? And then when you go into the form for your promotions and marketing, that's where you put in all the blurbs that's going to go on the newsletter that you want a marketing to have. Okay. That's true. No, that, that she's true. I, 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 was, I was talking about the promotion request form. So the, on the promotion request form, they have an area in there that says, that says description. Well, it doesn't automatically go on there. It's just that's what we would use it for. If there's a, if there's a description in there, we'll we'll use that. Um, thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, thank you, Sean. Um, Carolyn, you showed me an awesome um, feature in in J Connect. Whenever I need help, there's videos. So it's it's all right there. If you have questions, you can defer to the videos. Over to the right hand side, right next to your name, there's a little gear here. If you click on that, a little menu pops up. If you click on help, um, it takes you directly to CCB's um, help site. So this site is where I get all my information. Um, if you ask me a question and I, I don't have the answer right away, this is where I go. Um, everyone has access to it. Um, if you type in, let's say, if you type in forms, It'll give you all the instructions related to forms. 